Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and today we're making a fantasy castle on a floating island. So this will be a beginner slash intermediate course and really it's building on the techniques from my other courses. So my introductory course with the monster and the man, the sea shack scene and the low poly well. All of these you can find in the playlist section and you can go to my website if you want them in order. So we're slowly building in complexity and I'll be teaching you some new tips and tricks for speeding up your workflow and making perhaps more complicated shapes. Now, if these courses aren't quite detailed enough, I can thoroughly recommend the course from CG Boost. The link is in the description. It's a fantastic and in-depth course at what I consider a very reasonable price. If you enjoy the low poly work, then you could check out Polygon Runway's course. And if you want to get a bit more advanced, then Southern Shotty's course about basic characters and rigging are others that I would recommend. All these links along with other links are in the description. Some are affiliated links, so you'll be helping me if you click on those. So in this basic course, we'll be doing basic low poly modeling, but we'll be going a bit further than we have before. There'll be the option of texture painting, which I'll talk through as well, but it's not necessary. And the end result will eventually go on to Sketchfab, which is a great resource for showing off your work. So today's lesson, we're going to work on the base. So here I am in the basic scene. Now, before we start, I think it's a great idea to have some sort of reference images and ideas from what other people have done. And there's some really fun stuff that I've found on places like Pinterest in particular, where they've done similar sort of things with castles and crazy tall, weird fantasy towers, like the one I want to produce. I've also put down color palettes that I find interesting and that could work well. Probably go along this sort of line, perhaps. And you can just search for color palettes, or there's some great programs where you can take a picture, put it into a program like Adobe Color, and it comes out with a color palette for you. What I've done also is I've done some sketches. I came up with some simple ideas, as you can see here for different types of tower. I stuck with this one in the end, and then I took that sketch slightly further, just to really cement it in my mind. So I've kept these in mind when making the tower. The first thing I want to do is actually move my camera and light onto a new collection. Then they won't get in the way and I can hide them nice and easily. So select your light and your camera with shift left click, M to move to collection. So M for move to collection. New collection, cam and light. Press okay. I can now go to the outliner and hide that camera and light. It's worth mentioning that this is just the viewport. If you want to see what's going to be rendered, you click on the filter here and choose that camera, and then you can see what's going to be rendered. So the light, for example, we can't see in the viewport, but the effects will still be seen in the scene because of that camera being on. Okay, I'll select the default cube and I'll add a subdivision surface modifier to it. You can go to the modifier panel here and add it this way, add subdivision surface modifier, but it's much easier to press control one you must be in object mode for that to work. We only need one subdivision. If I press control two, that will add two subdivisions and so on and so forth up the numbers. And I can change them easily here. So I'm going to make this into a sort of rocky object really simply. If we go into edit mode with tab on my keyboard, or you can go to edit mode up here, control R to add a loop cut. So control R will add a loop cut around the middle, adding these extra vertices. And I can then drag that up Another one down here, drag that down, and we've got a really basic sort of rocky object that's a bit flatter at the top and the bottom because of these what are called proximity loops. If you want to learn more about complex modeling, then do try out my modeling exercises. And you can find the playlist under the playlist section in my channel. Now I find this easier in X-ray mode. So if we click on X-ray mode here, we can see the background vertices as well. And now I can start playing with my shape. So I can grab these two and pull them in maybe grab these and pull them down and just have some fun making a strange rocky object. If I come back to object mode, you can see I'm trying to keep a rough sort of cylindrical shape, but you can go for whatever style you like. So I've got my basic shape here. I'm going to go to top view with seven on my numpad. So I can go to top view or you can use the Cartesian coordinates here. So there's top view with Z and you can just click on Z and it will take you to top view. Shift D to duplicate and rotate it around a bit so it looks a bit different. Then you might want to go in and maybe edit this shape a little bit. And then we've got one different one. Let's go to top view again, seven on my numpad, shift D to duplicate and rotate it around a bit and then start editing this shape slightly. So if I come out of X-ray mode, you can see that a bit better. And I've got a floating island type thing there. So I can now select all three with shift left click, go into top view, shift D to duplicate and move them across to one side. I can then rotate them again and maybe shift D, rotate these. And it doesn't matter if they overlap like this, that's absolutely fine. And we'll sort that out later. 
it's in fact helpful if we don't have too many gaps because we're going to merge all these together. I'm going to create a few out here so it's going to go a bit smaller. So scale in the Z. It might help if you're in front view or side view for this, depends how you've modeled it. So we're just building up a rocky base. I'm going sort of a slight slope up this way, which is based on my reference images. And you may want some sticking into the rocks like this. Now remember when selecting, you need to go to X-ray mode in order to select the ones in the back as well. And I'm holding shift and selecting them in order to grab multiple vertices. There we go, so I've got a very basic base just there. Now it doesn't make too much difference, but this is the back and the front with the green arrow and this is left to right. So I might want to select everything and perhaps rotate it round in the Z so that it's going across like this. So when I go to front view with one, I know it's going to show me the front of my object. And you might also want to move it down so it's in line with the floor and it roughly in the center. It doesn't make too much difference. It's just a bit easier to find things. Okay, so we need to join all these together. So we need to select everything and press Control J. And Control J is to join. But before you do that, it's really important to know which one's the active object. And you can see that we haven't actually got an active object at the moment. So we need one that's yellow. So if I shift click perhaps this end one here, then that becomes the active object and they'll all join to that object. Therefore, the center point will become that center point there. It's probably better actually if we choose a middle object, so shift left click, and now that becomes the active object and it will join all our objects around that middle one. So control J to join. If that doesn't work, it might be because you haven't got an active object, so it doesn't know what to join to. Okay, so you could leave it like this and use that as your base and that's fine, but I think we can do a bit better and smarten this up a bit. Now I'm going to apply the subdivision surface modifier. Make sure you've only got one on your viewport and apply that. Any more, and I think they become a bit too rounded in my opinion. So I'll apply the one. Now this isn't really optimized for games. If you want to export this to a game engine because we've got lots of overlapping geometry for one. And also we've got lots of inside faces which aren't going to be seen and therefore taking up processing power, which we don't want. So what I'm going to do is go back to object mode and I'm going to go to sculpting mode, which is the tab at the top here. Now in sculpting mode, we have a really great option, which is the remesh up the top here. So if I go to remesh and just press the remesh button, we can see it remeshes it all and it's taken out the middle faces. So if I press Z to go into wireframe mode, you can see that there's no inside faces. But I'm going to undo that quickly and go back to solid mode because I think we can change the settings slightly so it gives us a more appealing look. Now one issue you may come across is you may get an error message down the bottom here saying object has non-uniform scale. If you do get that problem, then go back to layout mode and press control A, and that will apply your scale. If I press N at the moment and go to my item, you can see that my scale is all set to one. So I won't have any problems when I try to remesh my object. But if for some reason you happen to scale this in the Z, you can see that it's non-uniform now and we need to reset that so it's all back to one. So I need to press Control A and set my scale. Now if I go to Sculpt Mode, I can start playing with those remesh options. So remesh up here, I think the remesh of 0.1 is a bit fine. We've got a lot of polygons there which we don't really need. So you can actually go at a lower resolution. So I'll undo that, go to my remesh, and the voxel size we put up in order to make it lower res as it were. So we can put this to 0.5 perhaps and remesh. Now we've lost a fair bit of detail there. That might work for you, but I quite like the details. So I'm gonna go somewhere in between. So I'll undo that, remesh, and go perhaps to 0.2. Now yours may be a slightly different size, so your voxels might come out slightly differently. And there's a better result, and we can even reduce these polys a bit more later on. Now one thing you might want to do with this is to just flatten out the top slightly, so maybe fill in some areas around here. But beware, you might have symmetry on like me, so I can fill those areas in and then I can press shift to just smooth them out. You may not even need to fill the areas so much. We can just smooth those all out. We can use the flatten or scrape tools as well, but the smooth brush does a nice job. So we've got a nice simple platform there. Let's go back to layout mode now. Now I want to make this even more low poly and give it that chunky sort of feel. So I'm going to go up to the modifiers and choose the decimate modifier. 
Now you'll see what this does. If I click on that and then bring the ratio down, I don't need to change anything else, but you can see how it changes my shape and it makes it all triangular and blocky, which I quite like. You can go fairly low with this. You can go really chunky if you like that sort of look. I'm going to go so I've got around four to 500 faces, maybe a touch lower than that for the sake of game engines. So nice low polygon count, which you can see there. Now I'll press apply. You can't press apply in edit mode, so make sure you're in object mode. And let's go into edit mode and see our shape. And that looks pretty good. Now what you will need to watch out for is things like this though. This vertex is indented and it's got a long thin triangle and it just doesn't look very good. What you can do with any verts like that is just go up to vertex and smooth vertices. I've only got one selected, so it's smooth vertex, but you can change the smoothness here to whatever you need. So go around your object and check there's no strange, sharp, pointy bits like that. This one is a bit sharp and pointy, so I can do the same. So Shift R is to repeat the last. So I can just go around and press Shift R if there's any that I don't like. So Shift R to repeat the last command. This one's quite long and thin, so I might want to do the same with that, Shift R and everywhere else looks pretty good. Although there is one just there. Now we might not want to press Shift R on this because it smooths it out, but it brings it right into the middle here. What we can do is press GG to edge slide, and you can slide across the edges into position. And it keeps that sort of flat shape and puts it where you want it. So that was adding the base. In the next episode, we'll be making the grass and we'll be shading our objects. I'll also be going through basic texture painting, but I'll keep it nice and simple. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.